new sleigh bells ringling, ting ting, talk to my mom. That is Arabic for Merry Christmas, everybody. We hope you had a wonderful holiday. This is your friendly neighborhood Spider Man, Respawn Aim Fire, the Kick Ass Irreverent Gaming Podcast, where three lifelong friends gather to talk about Christmas. We're not going to talk about Christmas this year, but we are going to talk about years. 2020, 2019, what happened, what's happening, is chat on cocaine? Who knows? It's legal in California. Is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. But I do think that you might be on cocaine right now. I think that's a very, uh, that's very I'm likely. I'm on Quest Pizza. I just ate a whole pizza, and there's only six grams of carbs going in my body. The rest is coming out my pooper. Thank you, Fiber. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be a beautiful episode. Hi, I'm Chad Michael Ennis, a.k.a. The Enforcer. We also have Chad. <laughs> what if we're both Chad? Sorry, you're oh holding. The cocaine is speaking. We have holding Christopher Adams DePardo, a.k.a. Hi. A Venus Flytrap. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very special episode for you today. We just recorded last week's episode. You listened to it. When it launched, day one, on <gasps> Fuck Me, I just tweeted that this episode is going live that we're recording right now on 1226, but that's a Thursday. That's affable idiots, and we're even taking a week off that week. This is going the day before Christmas. This is Christmas Eve. Oh, I have to change the whole narrative. Welcome. Christmas is tomorrow, everyone. Happy <laughs> New Year. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what games you get on Christmas tomorrow. <laughs> ah! So, yes, we just recorded our, our episode last night for this week, and then we're recording ahead of time. And so there's no news. We're not going to talk about news. And you guys say, what? I come here for my daily fix of news. And I'm like, whoa, man, you don't know how days and weeks work. And also, you should stop coming to us for your news because you should just hear us be funny and silly and talk about things hi we're gonna look back on uh, last year's predictions that we made for 2019 we're gonna measure our penises as how well we did the more we got right the longer our penis the better we're able to please our preferred gender of spouse or mate i'm not gonna make any assumptions i don't know what's happening i don't either and that's what's beautiful about it holden just it's art Just close your eyes and let art happen to you. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds really creepy. (laughs) We're going to make our... Oh. Sorry, I just accidentally (laughs) inhaled too strongly through my nose, and there was a lot of mucus that just got into my mouth. We're going to make 2020 predictions. Do you guys remember six months ago when we played Mary Fuck Kill the second half of 2019? We're going to review that, and we're going to Mary Fuck Kill the first half of 2020. And then we're going to talk about Christmas and holidays. As Tolden drinks his chalky chalk. My chalky chalk. Uh, what a whirlwind of an episode we've had so far, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sticking yes. with us. Um, <laughs> let's talk about 2019. At the beginning of the year or end of last year, who knows how time works, we made predictions about what's going to happen in video game news, culture, and design manuals. We made those decisions. Let's see how they worked out. Hold on. I want you to just read through all of your predictions that you made last year and the year before yeah. and the way that you think the rest of your life is going to go. And we're going to tell you <laughs> how the good year you before. Are. I don't have those predictions on no, right just now. from 2019. Just tell us 2019. Okay. So, first prediction for 2019 was that a 2D Zelda game would be announced and released in 2019, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be 3DS or Switch. Uh, it turns out it was Link's Awakening. It was on Switch. Was that only announced this year? Yeah, it was announced this year. Son of a fucking whore. So you get one. You get one point. I get one point. Um. Pokemon on Switch will be given a title before the end of March. It was like a few. It was like uh, February twenty eighth is when that was given the title. So you changed did. these. <laughs> you went back and listened to the episode. You're like, oh, what did I say? End of January. Oh wait, I'm gonna fudge it and say March because I didn't go back and listen to the episode to see what your predictions were. Well, you God can go it. back and listen if you want to. Um, you the changed the recordings. Prediction. You doctored the evidence. <laughs> I doctored it all. The next one I did not get, and honestly, one of these is really hilarious. Actually, two of these are really hilarious. One's sad. Uh, three, <laughs> three games that will be released in 2019, according to me, at the beginning of 2019. 
One, The Last of Us Part Two. That's not the funny part, though. I said specifically Death Stranding and Ghost of Tsushima will not come out. <laughs> and boy, I was I was really off on that one. Um, mm. I said Metroid Prime Four will come before September ends, and then like literally weeks later, they said we're delaying it. It's not happening. <laughs> um, and the Doom Eternal's sad because I was right, and then it got delayed. Those assholes, they ruined it for me. So you missed all three of those. All three of those. That was like one like big prediction, but I, I didn't get any like partial credit at all for it. Nope. Uh, the next one, though, uh, Nintendo Switch will be the best-selling console worldwide for the first time in 2019. So here's the thing, and I want your opinion on this. Okay. Okay. Tell me, does it make you lose? <laughs> so I couldn't find numbers for worldwide sales. Okay. Okay. I also couldn't get numbers for anything in November just because it's too soon. And well, couldn't that, you get numbers for America been. Online? AOL. I got numbers from um, the MPD, according to uh, GameSpot, relaying that information. Okay, and it, okay. as of October, it's the best-selling in America. I just don't have any information if it's best-selling worldwide. Mm, by what margin is it the best-selling? <clears throat> uh, they didn't mention the margin. Mm. But there has been... There, it's the only console that's actually had growth this year, whereas all the other consoles went down. And it was already pretty close last year, so I feel like it wasn't necessarily hugely significant, but it was definitely undeniably in first place. Well, like the only, only numbers for that we know is that like PlayStation's over 100 million now, so... And it has a Guinness it's World totally Record for best-selling to what console we're talking brand, about. so... Like... It's totally irrelevant. <laughs> so, like... I'd be willing to give you – what is the population of the United States versus the rest of the world? I'll give you that percentage of the point. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like 327 million uh, divided by 2.7 billion. It's 327 million. In it's 327 million, 167,434. Oh, What's I was 327, way off. 167 – what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> What's three hundred and twenty seven million divided by seven billion? It's about seven point two billion. You get I'm gonna give you five percent of a point. Ooh, I got point oh five points. That's very yep. exciting. Um the next one is that Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven will be given a release window of twenty twenty. That would happen that announcement happened in twenty nineteen. I predicted that. And the release window was very narrow. It was in twenty twenty and it was actually a single day. Single day. And a beautiful day it will be. It's a beautiful so day. So you get 3.05 points. Yes. Just saying that point oh five could be the difference between you winning and me not winning. <laughs> now, weirdly enough, I guess we were also on cocaine when we did this last time. I have six predictions from last year, but you only had five. I don't know how I got away with that. We're going to have to – I did not fact check these do, ahead of time. One of, one of these <clears> – <throat> One of these um, could be a sub-point. Your fifth one on the list here could be yeah. a sub-point to six, but I wasn't sure if they when were I separate looked, or not, so just made them... When I looked on my actual ones, I also had six, and that's why I was confused. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so I just have six predictions, so here we go. I'll, I'll allow it. Uh, one, Xbox Live will replace Xbox Games with Gold with Xbox Game Pass. Rather than get two games a month, you'll get the whole Game Pass library. Did not happen. They bundled. Didn't they happen. Did not get replaced. They bundled. It was Day like a shot across the bow. It was like almost, but so close. Yeah. Days gone. We'll surprise. Don't check it off. Don't check it off because I didn't get it. I'm only checking off the ones you oh, got. Oh sorry. Oh sorry. Sorry. Stop it. Uncheck it. Uncheck it. Hold it. I did uncheck it. I Number already checked it. Number dose. Days Gone will surprise people and will end up being a game of the year contender. Now, here's the thing. I didn't say how it surprised people because it did <laughs> surprise people in terms of sales. It did. It did. It did. Like, <laughs> despite the reviews, it is surprisingly selling really well. It was not a game of the year contender. Okay. But I, I would vote half point on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to compare the population of the United States to the world population, <laughs> and that will be your points for that one. <laughs> That's going to give me 0.05 points. 
All right, point zero five right there. Okay, a VR game will be nominated for Game of the Year. Mm, didn't happen. I was surprised by that one when you said that. I'm like, that's gonna happen. Chad's honest with me. I'm really surprised. Half Life Alex might be next year. Who knows? Stay tuned we'll for see. 2020 predictions later this episode. <laughs> <laughs> now, this one, I just wrote 500 paragraphs. This is one big prediction with three bullet points. One, all three companies will release significant console upgrades. Nintendo will release a new Switch Pro design announced in the summer with increased screen resolution, battery life, and uh, and power at 299 and then offer the original Switch at a new price of $199. Um, nope. Nope. Microsoft, two new Xbox model- models following the Xbox One S and One X dynam- dynamic will be announced at E3, released in November, and all new games will be cross-generation at launch. Another Xbox model will be streaming-based and released in March 2020. I forgot how bullish I was that all of these consoles were coming out in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nope. Holden, stop checking it. Sorry. I mean, stop it's a it. habit. I My, swear the mouse is to going science, over here. I'm not even going to touch the mouse. My hands are up. You checked both of them. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are up. I'm not going to touch the mouse. My hands will be up the remainder of this discussion. Okay, okay. You're like a little kid who's coughing at the kitchen table. <laughs> and your mom's like, Put your hands up. Put your hands up. And finally, the last bullet point on this one prediction. Sony, PS5 will be announced in a press conference in the first half of 2019. Backwards compatible with PS4 and PSVR. PS5 games will not be playable on PS4. PS4. There will be one SKU also coming out in 2019. When did that first Wired article come out? In April or May. It certainly wasn't a press conference. It wasn't the, a press basically conference. Basically, the only thing I got right was backwards compatibility with PS4 and PSVR. I mean, you could be right about one SKU. We just don't know yet. Yeah. And they're not going to announce that in the next two weeks. My That's arms no. are really tired, Chad. Keep them up. I've got two more predictions. And well, these will also require some research, so keep your arms up. Death I, Stranding I, I will release in 2019. Already. Oh, you did research on this? Yeah. Okay. Death Stranding will release in 2019. It will be the first game announced as cross-gen, and it will be revealed at the PS5 reveal event. Well, there was no PS5 reveal event. But Death Stranding did release in 2019, and yep. it is cross-gen, thanks to backwards Ten. compatibility. How do you want to define cross-gen? Is that like an Xbox One X, like enhanced for PS5, or just if it's playable? So here's the thing. The uh, blurred lines said Miley Cyrus's okay. dad. No, that's not him. Who says that? Who's the, guy, who's the rapist singer that everyone loves? Not R. The Kelly, import, the not question, Bill Cosby. The answer is not as important as my arms lines? are tired. We'll put it that way. Who sings Oh, I put lines? my arms down. They're going down. They're going down. I can't handle it. Woo. Robin Thicke. What's Robin Thicke's relation to Miley Cyrus? Did they date? I don't know. All I know is the song is about rape. Oh, they had like an awkward thing on stage. I remember That's that. Yeah, and it's blurred lines yeah. like, hey, this could be assault, but it's not quite assault, blurred lines. Anyway, yeah, there's a, when we made these predictions, there was like a solid cross-gen, but now it's just like everything's cross-gen. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'm going to give you for that one. I'd say, because the, of the three things there, releasing in 2019, cross-gen, revealed a PS5 event. Only one of them isn't technically true, so or didn't happen. So you're so going to give me half a point? No, I'm going to give you point six six points. Oh, Maybe nice. That brings me up to point seven one points. Statistically, it's impossible for me to win at this point. And then finally, my last one was uh, based around certain releases and Metacritic. Uh, mm-hmm. Dreams will release with a Metacritic score below 65. Well, It doesn't have one. It doesn't have one because no one reviewed it, yeah. and it's only in early access. And technically, yeah. you can't even get it in early access anymore. Death Stranding will have over 90. I don't think that worked. It was like 82, 84. Oh, fuck me, 30. Cyberpunk will have, because I was bullish on Cyberpunk coming out, uh, will have around 85 to 90. No. And Gears 5 will launch at 80 or below. I think that might have done better. It did. It was like it was a little It was a little bit over. Not by a lot, but it was a little bit over. Gears 5 slaps. Can I tell you that? Mm-hmm. I've heard, I've heard it's a good game. It's on, my PS, it's on my PS5. It's on my Xbox One S. 
which is very different than it, than that. So I got zero for that. Yeah, but you checked it. You shouldn't have checked. Chad, why are you checking I these boxes? I checked it. Holden, <laughs> I checked it because Gear Five slaps, and I wanted to give it a little positive affirmation. That's redundant. All affirmations are positive. Uh, so, in 2019. Let me just say, I fucked up. I fucked up hard. I was so like, oh yeah, new consoles, all of them coming before the end of the year. I got 0. 0.71 points. You got 3.05, and the prize for winning, Holden is that mm-hmm. you are now first up on the rotation for Barf Games for January. And you know what that means? Mm-hmm. It is more than halfway through the month right now. You need to put that thing up on Patreon. Stat. I'll put up tomorrow. I have a list already, so I'll put it up there. Why do today what you can put off until tomorrow? Exactly. Boom. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, and to also, be fair, though, why is your entire list going to be Bioshock It was Infinite? completely switched. In 2018's predictions, I got one... Out of all my five correct, and you got almost all of yours correct, so it just it's just gonna flip flop. Yeah. Now here's here's the thing. At this point, do we want to wrap up 2019 by looking back at the last half and looking at what we did for Mary Fuck Hill? No, we don't. That's gonna be too short. Let's move on to 2020 predictions, where I can totally redeem myself. There is no such thing as a weaker sex. <laughs> 2020, everybody. This is my year. This is the age of Aquarius, and I'm an Aquarius. True story. But you didn't know that about me because you fucking hate me. We're not even friends. Um, I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna bouncy ball back and forth. We're gonna All bouncy right. ball. Um, I have some. <clears throat> I have seven total. Just in case some of ours were the same. Do you have any backups? No, I kind of figured it would be a problem for us to say. We just agree. I have five. But then we would exactly both get five. a point, Holden, and then we might as well just, like, fuck each other. That's how that works. This sounds like fun. Would be well, the problem. Uh, then I get to say all seven? <laughs> no. no, 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 no. Okay. Pick uh, the five you're time. most confident in. Well, well, then there's no reason for us to ping pong back and forth. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, fucking just, just throw one out there. Just go. Okay. Uh, so actually, I'm going to. I was inspired by you, Chad. Okay. And this year, I, I think Half Life Alex. Dad. Half Life Alex is going to be the first VR game nominated for Game of the Year. I don't know if it's going to win or not, but it'll be nominated. I'm, I'm making All that prediction right. right now. All right. I see what you're doing there. I <laughs> see what's happening here. All right. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rule one of these seven out, but I'm going to let you know what it is in the process. Yeah. My first prediction, before I sent you this article today, was Microsoft will release two new consoles simultaneously at launch. I think there's an article that came out today. Um, I think it was Business Insider did an interview with Microsoft at the event at Game Awards. They basically said, by the way, next-gen Xbox is just called Xbox, and Series X is just one of our offerings. So... I think it's a given that, yes, there will be multiple Xboxes, so I don't think that really counts. So I'm saying, fuck yeah. that prediction. I had a similar thing, too. Yeah. Well, I saw the article, and I'm like, damn it, Phil Spencer, if you waited a day. If you waited right? one day. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm trying to decide which one I'll get. Okay, this one I do, and I'm going to say. I'm going to say. I'm going to say it, Holden. You can't stop me. You can Sony All right. will announce a Game Pass competitor. That includes the entire first-party back catalog from PS4 generation. Will not include new ones going forward, but just the PS4 ones. So, how is this different than PlayStation Now? Hold, please. Okay. There's more. Sorry, the not PS5 part, that's not part of my prediction. I just They will have a Game Pass contr- uh, competitor that includes the first-party back catalog from PS4 generation. Okay. It's able to run on PS4, PS5, and PC. And it will be branded differently than PS Now. It will not retain the PS Now name. I don't know the fate of PS Now, but it will be branded differently. Interesting. Okay. Because PS Now right now is not really a competitor because you can't download on PC. You can only mm-hmm. stream games. Uh, and it's not the entire back catalog. You can download but, games on PS4, I believe, though, right? Correct. Yep. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know the fate of PS Now, but my my non-prediction assumption is that PS Now is going to be scrapped and replaced with something similar but better. Mm-hmm. That's my first prediction. 
Game Pass competitor includes the whole first party catalog from PS4 to ca- if you want to buy a PS5 and you have that whole four library now to play on it because of backwards compatibility. Thank you. And it's going to be able to run on PS4, PS5, and PC. And that also gets you, that's like the instant game collection idea where you buy a PS4 even after PS5 launches and you immediately have all of these stellar hits to play. And then, yeah, they just need to move on from PS Now because <laughs> the whole point of PS Now is you can play this right now and stream it. You don't have to download it. And it's like, well, we're moving away from that question mark. Who knows? Anyway, that's my prediction. I'm talking too much. Holton, what's your second one? <laughs> uh, so my second <laughs> one is uh, four parts. This is just four games that I don't have release dates, but I'm very confident are coming out in 2020. Okay. Um, number one, Ghostwire Tokyo. That was announced at E3. That's the game from uh, Tango Gameworks. They made Evil Within 1 and 2. And 2020 just fits right in that release cadence for them. I totally just, forgot the about that works game. out. That was the yes. same woman who then left that company and then gave the speech at Game Awards. Mm-hmm. So she's like, yep, don't mind my English. And yep. I was like, just fucking say what you're going to say. You've been on stage for five minutes and all you've been talking about is how happy you are. <laughs> she seems like the happiest person to play. She's so happy. <laughs> uh, Breath of the Wild 2 will come out in 2020 it will retain of the wild nomenclature oh nomenclature you sexy scientist <laughs> um, this is I don't know exactly what it's going to be called if I, were, if I were to guess this isn't part of my prediction just if I were to guess Curse of the Wild I've been saying that for a while now <gasps> Sounds but it will it will have of the wild as part of the name without having a 2 they don't want to have to say Breath of the Wild 2 right? but you kind of keep it in the same lineage. Um, Hollow Knight Silk Song is going to come in 2020. Mm, mm, I think mm. the timing for that works out, too. It's kind of harder to guess because it's like a three-person team. They could be, you know, eating Cheetos for all I know. <laughs> they don't have, like... <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Cheetos aren't even good. But they're good, good peoples. Controversial what? opinion. Cheetos are not good. The puff variety, the crunchy variety, the flaming Hot, not good. Cheese I'll Doodles, the hot. Wise brand, very good. Mm, don't agree with that. Mm, no. <laughs> I will say Puffs... Don't like pops. I don't like the the flame and hot Cheetos. I'll definitely take you there. Uh, but man, I love some Cheetos. Regular Cheetos, nah. good shit. Get out of my puss. Um, lastly, Elden Ring. I, I can't believe it doesn't even have a 2020 release date to begin with. But there's no release date for it. So yeah. Elden Ring, that's coming next year. All right. Here's one that's gonna turn you upside down. Nintendo <laughs> announces the Switch Pro, named TBD. It's just it's gonna be a more powerful version of the Switch. It doesn't have to be called the Pro. Alongside a Super Mario Odyssey successor. Ooh. Sub bullet. I'm adding this right now. It will launch with a bundle of the two. All right. Let me add this bundle bullet in here. Bundle to include the both. Okay. So for my next one, uh, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo will be revealed as. Deathloop is the same guys who made Dishonored. Oh, the one with the hands that are too big? <laughs> yeah, this is from Arcane. Um, those, both those games, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, are going to be revealed as next gen exclusive games. They Ooh. didn't. They released. They announced them both at E3 last year. They didn't show any gameplay. Didn't say a release date, and didn't say what consoles at all. The websites I went to, they confirmed that there was no mention of any consoles. If it was coming to PS4 and Xbox One I, as as well, like if it was a cross gen game, I think they would have just said it's PS4 and Xbox One at that time. And then later on, like yeah. next year, would have said, "Oh, it's also coming to the PS5 and the uh, Series uh, X or just Xbox now." But they didn't, so I think it's going to be their next gen exclusive games. All right, number three for me, Mister Petiti. Xbox's new consoles will outsell PlayStations in holiday 2020. Ooh. Yeah. So I'll share. I had a sixth prediction that I decided not to include, and that was that they would be within 100,000 units of each other. I don't oh, know which no. way it's going to go. Xbox is going to release a cheaper variant, and it's going to clean house. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. It also just depends on if Sony does... A, they're a dual console release too, which there's been a rumor of, but it's definitely not as substantial as Microsoft, which is right. essentially 100% confirmed. Right. Um, so my next two predictions are related to next gen. Okay. Okay. Um, mostly just want to focus on for each console, how it's going to be announced throughout the year. And then what a, a launch title is going to be for it. Okay. 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 Go, 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 go. I'm going to, so you mentioned Microsoft. So I'll go with Microsoft now. 
Um, we'll get teases of information throughout the first half of 2020. So there might be like small story. This isn't like, I'm not predicting anything particular here, but like we'll get small like bits of information like USB-C and the controller, like that kind of stuff. But then in E3, that's when we're going to get the big blowout. We're not going to hear like price uh, or, or launched games or anything like that until E3. But we're going to get little like tidbit stories from like interviews and things like that um, in the meantime. But when it does launch, uh, Forza Motorsport 8 will be the only launch title that is a Series X exclusive or at least like next gen Xbox exclusive title because Halo Infinite isn't that we know that's a cross gen game. This will be the yeah. only like next gen exclusive game for Microsoft at launch. And Forza Horizons 4 launched with the 1X as well, right? Uh, Horizon 4 did, yeah. So there's like a, always a Forza with a new system? Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. PS5 will be one SKU. Mm-hmm. Not even separate storage sizes. There will be one PS5 console at launch. I think, if I were to guess, I think you're right. It just, that's not like that's Sony to like... Yeah, I think you're right. Yep. And that's part of the reason why I think Xbox is going to sweep them under the rug. Unless, like, PS5 is $99. I mean, you just never know. You never know. I mean, they made it ugly enough on that uh, that dev kit, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's why it's $99. It's just this big honking box. They didn't, they didn't have to do yeah, much to, like, get it all in there. They didn't have to any R&D costs on making it look good and <laughs> fitting it into a nice <laughs> container. Yeah. It's a benefit because it is your entertainment center. It's so big. It doesn't even need to like, fit your entertainment center. It just is the entertainment center. It's massive. It's huge. It's really powerful. Yep. So here's my Sony PS5 predictions. So they're going to give their first look at a PS5-related event before the end of March. Um, that And they're gonna that's going to be a big blowout. They're just going to go ahead and they're going to talk about the release month of the console. Not as, We already know holiday, but they're going to go release month. They're going to go ahead and show off the price. There'll be some game teases. But then E3, they're going to do their kind of their traditional E3 they've done in the past few years when they've been at E3 at least, and literally just show trailers and trailers just like and had like the highlight be on the game. Bitches on stage. The E3 that have that have always gotten Sony the most attention is one in like the most praise is one where they just hear the games. Yeah, that's There's the one it. that opened with God of War. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that that was a great one. The orchestra playing, and you hear the whoa. Those are people. That's the, the bases. <laughs> also, didgeridoos. Launch title for PS5. Oh, we're still on. Okay, okay. Yes, this is the second part of the prediction. Launch title for PS5 is going to be Ratchet and Clank, a, a new Ratchet and Clank game. It is right. time. Last one came out in 2016. That was the remake, and that thing sold so fucking well. It would be absolutely ridiculous if they didn't release another one do you remember the feature film that released right alongside the game release <laughs> <laughs> yeah didn't no one knows about that but the game did really well it sold better than any of the ps3 ones um np the um, mpd i can't remember the person who was representing mpd at the time but they commented that it, it's right back to its popularity back in the ps2 era that game was released in 2016 it, it, they have enough time to make in four years another ratchet and clank game and i think it's a ps5 right. launch title it'd be it'd be unique so I think that's what's going to happen. Oh, and also another thing to mention there, Colin Moriarty has also also said too that Ratchet and Clank is not done yet on the PS4, and then nothing has happened. And I'm like, at this point, they're not going to announce a Ratchet and Clank game in 2020. For yeah, they're not going to announce PS4. something new first party. Yeah, especially when they still have to do Last of Us Part Two. They still have to do Ghost of Tsushima. They don't want to distract from those games. But as like an end of the year title to launch with the PS5, I think it would work. I think it'd be a good one. Yeah. So that's your last prediction, right? That's my last prediction, yeah. All right. This is the one I'll go with. Okay. <clears throat> Google Stadia will get its act together by E3, and that part is just like just a dig at Google Stadia. It's not. It's, like, <laughs> it's subjective. You can't really measure it. It'll get its act together by E3, but here's the measurable part. And we'll see steady release day and date. Steady releases day and date with new games into the second half of the year. So by the time we get to post E3, when you see a game launch, it's going to come out on Stadia for or Stadia either first or uh with everything else. We won't see okay. the eternal situation. So it'll be just like every other like console is at that point basically. Exactly. It's just like it's yeah. Games we'll just come out on Stadia. Own. Yeah. It'll have yep. a third party support basically. Yeah. How does that tie into next gen games? We'll be able to do next gen games too. 
like Ghost, like Ghostwire Tokyo, for example. If, if my prediction's right, that's a next gen game. Would that also be on CD at the point? Or yeah, it's like PC. Like PC is okay. like coming to a better PC than you have. It's like no, it just comes to PC. And if you have a good enough PC okay. to run it, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> if you got Stadia, it's a good enough PC. <laughs> All right. That's I our think we both have good predictions. We do. I think we but do. Man, man, how fucking good would that have been if that would have paid off that all these systems would have come out this year and I would have just fucking swept the floor with your ass. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot ago. about Stadia for my predictions, by the way. Like, didn't even register as something to consider for 2020. And you just so recently <laughs> played it. And I just recently played it, too. Really, really spoke to me, that Stadia thing. Spoken a goat. Here we go. So, part two of our episode today is Mary Fuck Kill. We've decided we want to do this once every six months and just... <laughs> yes, that was the correct tense. Yeah, okay. We want to do this once every six months and just look at the next six months and what's coming out and decide what game we're going to marry, what game we're going to fuck, what game we're going to kill. I want to first retroactively look at what we did for the second half of 2019 and figure out what we did. And then we'll look forward and decide that for 2020. I said all of that so I could stall while I found it, and then I forgot to look while I was saying all of that. So now, <laughs> here we go. In your head, you're still like, stall, stall them. What am I stalling for? Shit, I ran out of time. I can't stall anymore. Search for MFK, <laughs> Martin Futher King. <laughs> Futher? <laughs> Mary Fuck Kill, also known as Martin Futher King. Um, I bet, I bet, s- nope, we're going to move on from that. <laughs> Mary Fuck Kill 2019 <laughs> Part 2 Here are the games that we chose Again, this is not representative of every game In that 6 month time But between I think this was June Between June I think it was right after E3 Between June yeah. and now The end of December These games came out Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order Wolfenstein Youngblood Control Astral Chain, Blair Witch, Man of Medan, Monster Hunter World Iceborne, Gears 5, Borderlands 3, Damon X Machina, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, The Surge 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, The Outer Worlds, Death Stranding, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and Doom Eternal. Through a very scientific process, we finally ended up with the game we would fuck being Control. The game we would marry... Being Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs> that marriage fell apart really fast. Ooh, We've divorced. It's I want been... a divorce, yeah. baby girl. <laughs> and then the game we would kill being Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I would say, aside from marrying Star Wars, so now that, in hindsight, having played almost all of those games, I would say, uh, yeah, we, we got Mary wrong. And, but again, none of these have a quality mm-hmm. statement with them. Like, if you marry yeah. something, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best thing. And if you kill something, it doesn't mean it's the worst thing. And if you fuck it, like, none of these have a quality. It's just, we're going to marry it, we're going to fuck it, we're going to kill it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that was 2019. Let's play 2020. Here's the list of contenders. And then I've broken them up into six three-game chunks. <clears throat> Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Animal Crossing New Horizons. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Uh, can you actually, can you send me this list so I can see it as well? No, 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 no. Or can you copy I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you them three at a time. Okay. I'm going to, whenever we actually start Mary fucking killing it, because I only want you to focus on those three. I'm just okay. right now going through the list of games that are coming out in the next six months. So. Okay. Uh, number two is Animal Crossing New Horizons. Number three, Darksiders Genesis. Yes, I know it's already out on Stadia and PC right now, but it's coming to everything that matters in 2020. Dreams. Iron Man VR, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Neo 2, Doom Eternal, Half-Life Alex, Resident Evil 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Predator Hunting Grounds, Gears Tactics, Fast and Furious Crossroads, Marvel's Avengers, The Last of Us Part Two, and Minecraft Dungeons. All of those games are coming out between now and June. Round number one, Mary fuck kill, holding to part of. We have to come to a consensus together. Yes. Iron Man VR, Dreams, Half Life Alex. All three of okay. them have some kind of VR component to them, which is why I grouped them together. Iron Man VR, Dreams, and Half Life Alex. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. here's the issue with 
some of these. Man, I want to fuck the shit out of Half Life, Alex, or Marriott. But I don't even have like I don't have a VR headset. It's like not having the penis to fuck it. I don't have any ability to, to do it. It's anything like half like Alex is this beautiful Ukrainian girl, but she's in Ukraine and you don't have money for a plane ticket and you want to fuck her, you want to mm-hmm. marry her, but long distance is not your thing. But then at the same time, I'd much rather kill Iron Man VR because I just could give two shits about that game. I don't oh, care man. at all. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I also don't care about dreams either. This is a tough one. Uh, right? Right? Dreams. I feel like dreams can be anything. Like a really sexy role play, you can literally make your partner whatever you want them to be. And you can have sex as many different types of ways that you want. It could make for a really, really interesting marriage. You get what I'm saying? I think that's a good way of looking at it, yeah. yeah. And if your marriage is stale and boring, make a completely new type of marriage in dreams. Yeah. Whereas I feel like... Iron Man VR, if you don't like the first level, nothing about level two, three, four, and on is going to convince you otherwise. Right, it's, right. It's so the here's same. the other, here's, here's the follow-up. Iron Man VR, you get that thrill right off the bat. You're flying. You're pulsar blast. You're unibeaming out your chest. <clears throat> it's going to be great, but it's going to be that similar experience. Also, you're a fucking hot Marvel superhero, so you want to fuck it. Half-Life Alex, way over there in Ukraine. We push a button, it kills somebody random on the earth, and we get a million dollars. It's that old tale. <laughs> <laughs> That's Half-Life Alex. So here's the thing, though, is that Half-Life Alex, like, think about, like, fucking, like, you're right, the, the immediate thrill of Iron Man VR, it's going to get you off. It's going to be good. But yeah. I, I'm assuming here, but again, these games aren't out yet, so we can all, you can only assume, mm-hmm. that it's going to be pretty one note. And I but think Half-Life Alex is going to be a dynamic experience. And if I'm going to have, like, a one-time fuck, I want it to be a dynamic, interesting okay. experience. Okay, first of all, how long do you think you're going to last in this one-time fuck to see anything in that dynamic experience? No, well, you want I the think down I'd and dirty. Longer. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely not last as long uh, with Half-Life Alex because that game is probably going to be fucking incredible compared to Iron Man VR. As, again, I predicted that's going to win Game of the Year. So, like, I want a Game of the Year first time. I don't want, like, Iron Man VR. It's going to be, like, dumpster fire in, like, three months after it comes out. I guess what it really comes down to is Tony Stark versus Gordon Freeman. Do you want to fuck Tony Stark? Or do you want to fuck Gordon Freeman? Well, Gordon Freeman's not in Half-Life, Alex. There you go. You don't even get that option. Tony Stark or you want to fuck no one? (laughs) I don't want to fuck Tony Stark. (laughs) There, oh, I just honestly, man. I think it's. I think that I really just want to kill Iron Man VR. I've wanted to kill that game since it was first announced. Half Life Alex gets me excited for like. Here's where we can little like, Sebastian this. things is gonna do. We can little Sebastian this. <laughs> 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 For those of you who don't know, that's a celebrity special forces from the Affable Idiots podcast joke. Um, I will let you kill Iron Man VR, but you owe me one later. Okay. Okay. All right. So we are killing Iron Man VR. We are marrying dreams. And we are fucking Half-Life Alex. Round two. Darksiders Genesis. Minecraft Dungeons. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. <laughs> I don't care. About these are all these dumpster either. games. <laughs> <laughs> That's the commonality between the three of them. Okay, so we have the Crystal Chronicles remaster. The other games are so unimportant to me, I literally already forgot what they are. Minecraft Dungeons is the <laughs> Diablo-like Dungeons... Minecraft game. Dark Siders Genesis game, yeah, is the was... Diablo-like okay. Dark Siders game. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition is the RTS version of Final Fantasy. Okay, so when it when it comes to Minecraft Dungeons, no wait, um, Final Fantasy I, Tactics is the RTS. What is Crystal Chronicles? Crystal Chronicles is it was a GameCube RP, uh, RPG where you had to like carry these crystals around and stay <laughs> in the, like the zone of this like crystal like force field essentially. Uh, I played a little bit of it on GameCube when I was a kid, and I didn't like it. So I have no problem killing it right now. Okay, 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 okay. But I also place. don't want to marry or fuck a kid's game. <laughs> <laughs> Here's I'm going to throw out something to you. That's like Darksiders Genesis 
we're gonna fuck by process of elimination. One, Minecraft dungeons, I don't wanna fuck a box. Those voxels, that'll be so uncomfortable. And mm-hmm. everything in that game is ugly as hell. I hate the way Minecraft looks. I don't want to look at that for the rest of my life. I'm not going to marry that. Which means we have to kill Minecraft Dungeons. I'm fine with that. Follow up. I assume Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles has like that chibi art style. I can't fuck a kid. Yeah. I can't fuck mm-hmm. this little tiny fantasy. So I've got to marry it in a sexless, loveless marriage. In something that's like, oh, you're charming to look at for the rest of my life, but I'm never going to put my penis in you. And then we fuck Darksiders Genesis because it's going to be a raw fucking four horsemen of the apocalypse night of your life. I'm going to agree with you across the board and we can move on because here's the thing. None of these games will move up to the next round afterwards. So, ah, But you've forgotten how this works. They do move up to the next round. They move to the next round, but afterwards, like the next round after that, they won't move up. You don't know. You don't know. I'm just assuming that they won't. Minecraft Dungeons were killing... Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered. We are marrying. Next three. Doom Eternal. The Last of Us Part 2. Cyberpunk 2077. Okay. You you had all this one is loaded with all games. of your favorite games. Which is why uh, I'm making you choose between them. Okay. Cyberpunk 2077. I gotta marry that game. I want to spend a long enriching life with that game. Yeah, you can I can make a, decisions. Yeah. I have agency, which is important. I have have my own independence, but you have like a relationship with that world. Okay. So I'd marry that. Doom Eternal, and then Last of Us Part Two. Oh man, Here's I also want to marry argument. Last of Us Part Two. You go for it. Doom Eternal is like a fucking wild blackout Vegas trip, and you're gonna have. The best sex of your life, but you won't remember it because it was so crazy and you were high on everything and metal music going ah, the whole time. <laughs> so you fuck it. <laughs> Last of Us Part 2, everyone in that game is miserable and sad and the world is a, a dumpster and you just want to put it out of its misery. So we kill it. I I agree with you there. I, I Yeah. This this I, actually turned out I to be the easiest one. I can't pity fuck a sad person. Can you imagine fucking someone who's frowning the whole time? <laughs> 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 but also, like in in comparing Cyberpunk and, and Last of Us Part Two, I I, I kind of know what to expect with Last of Us Part Two in the sense of looking back at Last of Us, I want to play the game again because it was a great game, not because I felt happy or <laughs> like <laughs> at all playing that game. Um, yeah. But Cyberpunk, I don't know. It could be really depressing as shit. I don't know. But I feel, I feel like. That type of game has room to be funny and to be sad, and so yeah, I'm I'm down with what you're saying. Last of cool. Us Part Two, kill it. I still love it. Not a value judgment. I have to say exactly. that this not, not a value, value judgment. Not a value judgment. We're yeah, purely right. killing it because we can't fuck a frowny face. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, so for that round, fuck Doom Eternal, kill Last of Us, marry Cyberpunk 2077, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Gears Tactics, Fast and Furious Crossroads. Okay, so Animal Crossing, by definition, Remember should you be owe Mary. Me. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of Animal Crossing is nurturing a life on an island, which is like a big part of what marriage is. But nurturing at, a life together. What kind of life are you nurturing? Fucking wolf people the happiest who charge you rent. And bunnies who just want your flowers and looking at chairs in a living room. What kind of a life is Sounds that like marriage. It sounds like <laughs> marriage. <laughs> All right, so Gears Tactics. And what was the last one? Fast and Furious Crossroads. <laughs> oh, I want to kill that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. I just don't care. I just don't care about Fast and Furious. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm cool with uh, here's the thing, I'm cool with fucking and I, I know you're gonna try a minute and say we're gonna kill Animal Crossing. I know that's gonna happen. <laughs> we have we um, have to. We have to kill Animal Crossing. But then do we want to marry Gears Tactics or You marry Gears Tactics the... because as they stated forty five times in that trailer to justify the sixty dollar price point, it has forty plus hours of campaign. 
it's a meaty game. There's a lot there for you to un- like discover about each other and learn about each other over the years. If you're if you're talking about longevity of the game, people literally put thousands of hours into Animal Crossing. Well, I mean, you can replay Gears Tactics, like just like you can pick <laughs> new flowers over and over in Animal Crossing. <laughs> but Gears, and here's the other thing: polyamory. There's such a wide cast of characters in Gears Tactics. If you want to go fuck Baird, or you want to fuck Kate, or you want to fuck Marcus Phoenix, like you've got a whole cast of characters your whole life to spend. Okay, so again, whereas Animal with Crossing Animal Crossing, Crossing New Horizons, it's all bestiality. But here's the thing about Animal Crossing, though, is that if you don't like one of the animals in your kingdom, you can literally go to in this game, go to Tom Nook and be like, "Yeah, fuck it, I don't want them in my town anymore." You can just kick them out and then get new animals. So if you want like a variety of of potential marriages, Animal Crossing's got it beat on the time and on the number of potential spouses. So you gotta try I again. Just don't Chad. See it. It, I just don't see it. You gotta try again. I just don't see it. And then you can get a fuck in with Michelle Rodriguez just to say that you fucked Michelle Rodriguez. Fast and Furious Crossroads. Mm-hmm. I don't like Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> I don't either. I hate her. I hate her I, so I wanna, much. That's the thing. Is like Now that you mentioned Michelle Rodriguez, Charlize like, let's kill... Charlize Theron? She wasn't in Fast and Furious. She was in the okay. spinoff, wasn't she? No, she was in Fast and Furious where Dom had a kid. Oh, Dom! Okay. I think it was eight. But is he in, is she in Crossroads? We don't know that. Well, we don't. We've only seen a tease. There's a full four minute trailer of Final Fan or Final, Fast and Furious Nine, apparently too, that they announced on stage. This, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to kill Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> That's such a horrible thing to say. <laughs> no, I just want to fuck Charlize Theron in Fast and Furious Crossroads. Her PS2 but we don't know looking she's ass the- model. But we don't know if she's there. Uh, yeah. And do you really want to marry? Or you? So you want to fuck it? Um. Then you would want to marry your. Here's tactics. another thing. Here's another mm. thing. You ever seen the movie mm. Crank? Oh, Crank's awesome. Yeah, where he's fucking in the car to keep his heart rate up so that he doesn't die. That's something you could do in Fast and Furious Crossroads, and that sounds hot. <laughs> this is like that hot coffee cheat in San Andreas. Like, Senate finds out that you can fuck someone in your car in your Fast and Furious Crossroads, and the video game industry is in a dumpster fire again. Yeah. Um. That makes me want to kill Fast and Furious Crossroads. You're just making arguments so I think to we kill agree. Fast and Furious Crossroads. We're killing fi- American Crossing. God, Animal. We're killing Animal Crossing. We're marrying Gears <laughs> God Tactics. Damn it! And we're fucking Fast and Furious Crossroads. Great decision, Chad. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> Why do two more I to go? Two more to go. I care more about Animal Crossing than I do about <laughs> Alex. Ah. Again, it's not a value judgment. It's not a value judgment. Okay. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. <laughs> Neo 2, Predator Hunting Grounds. Three games that people love that we just probably don't care about. I'm going to say Mary Predator Hunting Grounds, because I'm actually looking forward to maybe playing that with people oh. on like a game night. And you love Dreadlocks. I love Dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Here's, here's the thing sure. about Ori and the Will of the Whips. I, I can't fuck an animal. I, I just can't do that ethically. Technically, you can't marry an animal either, but you can kill an animal. So oh, no, you can marry an animal. Fine. You can kill an animal. <laughs> I know that from, from my best friend. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Ori and Will of the Wisps. Yeah, I, okay. So, yeah, you don't want to fuck it. I've never played one before, so I honestly don't know what to think about that game. They're beautiful looking games. If you want to look at something beautiful for the rest of your life in a loveless marriage, you've got that option. You should totally totally, totally give Ori a chance now that you have Game Pass. Yeah, I should. I should. I actually think I have it downloaded already. Yeah. Actually, I definitely have it downloaded already. I definitely have it. All right. Let's marry that one. Ori and the Will of Wisps. We're going to marry marry that one. Okay, we're going to marry Ori. What are we doing to Predator, then? Well, we're going to fuck Predator. We're fucking Predator? Because gonna... you love dreadlocks. You want to hold those dreadlocks. dreadlocks like a handlebar. <laughs> like, like the reins on a horse. You're going to grab with one fist and pull, pull Predator back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're fucking... No, we're marrying Ori and the Will of the Wisps. We're fucking Predator hunting grounds. And we're killing Neo, too. Yeah. All right, Finally. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Resident Evil 3, Marvel's Avengers. 
we're gonna murder Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> why do you hate that game so much? Oh my! I don't understand why people think it looks good. I really oh, don't it understand does. it. it. Looks fun. But here's the I, thing: I, the other two games do look better. I almost made a prediction that that uh, that game's going to be under a seventy on Metacritic. I almost made that prediction. Sixty nine. Yep. Yeah. Um, but so, I do okay. admit, yeah, so, Final Fantasy VII and Resident Evil Three, I am more excited about than Marvel's Avengers. So I, I say, you got to fuck Resident Evil Three because it's going to be like a short, sweet experience. Ooh. And then uh, okay. And then Final Fantasy VII, you got to marry because it's a long, it's a much longer enriching experience. And they got Aerith in there. And they got Aerith exactly. Yeah, and Tifa. Mm-hmm. And Barrett has a gun for an arm. Imagine having sex with that. Painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm on board. So we're don't use your hands, Resident Barrett. Don't 3. use your hands. <laughs> <laughs> We're marrying Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we're killing Marvel's Avengers. All right. Here's the thing. Now to find out which game in each category we are ultimately killing, ultimately fucking, and ultimately marrying in 2019. I'm sorry, in 2020, the first half. So, between Iron Man and Minecraft Dungeons. So this is for kill. Sorry. To determine our kill game, we're going to do three pairs and then we're going to do one of the three. Which one we're killing? Iron Man or Minecraft Dungeons? Which one are we killing? Iron Man or Minecraft Dungeons? Honestly, I could give no fucks about Minecraft Dungeons. The the IP yeah. or the game. I'm gonna You do whatever you want with this one then, because I, I would kill either one, and it wouldn't make a difference to me. Great. So Iron Man I'm a sociopath out. when it oh, comes wait. to so that Iron Man and Minecraft. Minecraft Dungeons is now the kill in that one. So we are killing Minecraft Dungeons. Iron Man disappears from the list. Mm-hmm. Last of Us Part 2, Animal Crossing New Horizons. We all know how I feel about that one. Yeah, I have a hard time. I, I love I love both of those games, but I have a really hard time killing free animals when the people in The Last of Us Part 2 are asking for it. Yeah, a, a, a good, hearty, ethical mercy kill is what we're really going for here. Let's kill yeah. The Last of Us Part 2. All right. And then uh, killing Neo 2 or Marvel's Avengers? Marvel's Avengers. Killing Marvel's Avengers? That's just uh, that's genocide right there. Yeah, because well, cause Neo you 2 are, will actually be a good game. You are Scarlet Witch, just killing all the mutants. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Marvel's Avengers will kill Marvel's Avengers. Okay, so now, between those three, Marvel's Avengers, Last of Us Part 2, and Minecraft Dungeons, what game are we killing most in the first half of 2020? Honestly, for me, it's Minecraft Dungeons. Yeah, undeniable. Minecraft Dungeons is it, lady and gentlemen. One lady. <laughs> lady one and One lady gentlemen. and one gentleman. All right, kill Minecraft Dungeons. Fuck. First two are Half-Life Alex or Darksiders Genesis. Oh, you got to fuck Half-Life Alex. The You have two separate hands. You could do so many things with that. And you get the Knuckles controllers. Exactly. Oh, man, you ever been knuckled? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just make a fist and then you just, like, rub your knuckles all over the foot. <laughs> <laughs> so we're fucking all you can think like of is someone going, Ow, what the fuck are you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> if you've got brass knuckles you can put on, too, it's even better. <laughs> uh, so we're fucking Half-Life Alex Out of that pair uh, Next pair is Doom Eternal Fast and Furious Crossroads Doom Eternal Oh hell yeah Oh hell yeah That's gonna be more exciting And then Predator Hunting Grounds Or Resident Evil 3 Resident Ooh. Evil 3 Really? The fuck? Over Predator Hunting Grounds? Yeah The same But you, they got the dreadlocks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Have you seen Jill in Resident Evil 3? Have you seen Nemesis? Ugh. You're right. Resident Evil 3. Let's fuck it. All right, and now... And there'll be a mod that gives gen- uh, Nemesis dreadlocks. There must be. <laughs> Half-Life Alex, Doom Eternal, Resident Evil 3. What are we fucking in the first half of 2020? I am so excited for Resident Evil 3. So excited for that game. 
But is that the game you're going to fuck most in the first half of 2020? Oh, yes. You think Considering so? how many times I've fucked Resident Evil 2 this year, I- I'm, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I'm on board with that because I'm not going to fuck Half-Life Alex Again, in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. I don't have it's, money to yeah. go to Ukraine. Uh, and then Doom Eternal, you know, like I had a fuck with Doom once around. I don't want sloppy seconds. I'm a, I'm a, I'm tepid on it. So, yeah, let's Resident Evil Three, baby. The game we are fucking most in 2020, Resident Evil Three. And finally, what game are we gonna marry this year? First pair is Dreams and Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Obviously, there is no value judgment associated with this category. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say Dreams. Uh, yeah, I guess, but and it's not going to make it any further than this. There's no way it's going to we'll compete. So, dreams, why not? Uh, next up, Cyberpunk 2077, Gears Tactics. Oh, fi- Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, yeah, I agree with yeah. you 100%. And then finally, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII, VII Remake. Remake. Yeah. Yeah. And then that comes down to Dreams, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Dreams. This is, I think, where we might be torn because you're probably Cyberpunk, and I'm definitely Final Fantasy VII. Yes, here's here's what I'm gonna say about Cyberpunk: replayability. You'd be able to replay that game and make different decisions and have vastly different outcomes. Final Fantasy VII is gonna be a big game, but it's gonna be linear in the sense of like your decisions. You aren't really gonna have decisions that impact this, the narrative. Here's what I'm gonna like say. you like in a relationship, it's it's a two way thing. You make decisions, they make decisions, and you work together. Final Fantasy VII sounds like a one sided relationship. Point counterpoint. I think Cyberpunk 2077's replayability is actually false advertisement. <gasps> because here's the thing: they're gonna say, "Yeah, you could choose this choice, you could choose that choice, and then you can replay it and choose the other choice." But the game never ends. Because you're never going to finish it. There's always going to be some kind of side quest, something that you're going to do, that you're never going to be able to finish it the first time, let alone go back and play it again a different way. But even even though, even so, which I, I'm going to disagree with you on that, but let's just agree to disagree. Okay. Even okay. so, I will have a different Cyberpunk 2077 than you do. We will have the same Final Fantasy VII. Will we? If we power up the same team? For the team? most part. Does your Aerith die? Does my Aerith die? Who knows if Aerith even dies in this one. But I can kill anyone in Cyberpunk 2077. Is that the only character you, that can die in But you, you can power up Materia differently than I do, and so you have completely different builds of the same character? Yeah, but like our world could literally be different. Like I could do something to a gang that has impacts to another gang, and then I'm limited on decisions that I can make. You're not going to have that kind of thing with Final Fantasy VII. There, uh, in no offense, but there's just there's I, no way you could argue for I that. Don't, there's no I don't way. have I don't have an answer to this. But does that make for a good marriage? Is being again able to have agency and decision making is important. Is do marriage? I want to have a one sided relationship, or do I want to feel like I have a say in what's happening? In my marriage. Damn it, you're right. At this point, yeah. We're going to marry Cyberpunk 2077. All right. In the first half of 2020. I do feel bad for Final Fantasy VII. I feel bad about that, though, because it's not even on there. It's, it's going to be a really good game. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's not even in the three. We're not even going to fuck it. We are marrying Cyberpunk 2077. We are fucking Resident Evil 3. And we are killing Minecraft Dungeons. Again, no value judgments, <laughs> but that's how the first half of our 20s... Except for Minecraft dun- Dungeons. That one is a value judgment. That one is a huge value judgment. <laughs> fuck that game. Not in the fuck way. To be fair, though, kill in general is a value judgment. Marry and fuck aren't, but kill I kind of feel like is a value <laughs> judgment. Yeah. Unless it's like there's just three really great options and you have to kill one of them. Then it's not. Right, right. But sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. And that's... Uh... That's the end of our special episode, but before we go, I want to talk about one last thing, and that's just, like, what gaming in the holidays means to you. Do you have a special memory? David, sorry, it's, ooh, David, just, like, <laughs> <laughs> my body, I started to do, like, the mannerisms of Alexis and Shit's Creek, it's just, like, ooh, David, oh, how cute. Um, do you have a special story, Holden, around the holidays and gaming and how that impacts your life and makes you feel? And I'm going to pour yes. some water while you do that. 
<laughs> so it was Christmas 2001. I was eight years old, and I really wanted a PS2 for Christmas because I wanted to play Final Fantasy X. I thought that game looked really, really sick, and I, I didn't, I didn't get it. My dad got me a GameCube, and I was pretty what disappointed a prick. at first. <laughs> I was pretty disappointed at first. I got Metro Prime with it. And it was very hard for an eight-year-old. I couldn't. I got past the first level and thought the first level was really cool. Then I had no fucking idea what to do after that. Um, but looking back, I'm so glad that happened because then I got to play um, uh, Mario Sunshine. I got to play The Wind Waker. I got to play Twilight Princess, and that like set me up for my love of games and my love of Nintendo. And I feel like I would have been a very different gamer. Not bad, better, or worse. Just like it would have been a different gamer had I gotten that, that PS2 instead but i got the gamecube i'm really happy about it plus the gamecube had a handle come on yeah totally pointless use of that handle (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) yeah gaming i mean christmas and gaming go hand in hand for me my entire life as most people who love video games it tends to um but just in general that whole time i come from a family of four kids so we get a new game console or we get new games and immediately, while mom's cooking breakfast, we plug up the new console and we all play something together. Um, but also, around Christmas every single year when I was a kid, my cousin Blake would come to stay. He lived in Delaware. And he would come to stay with us over the summer for like six weeks. And then he would come to stay with us for like two weeks over Christmas break. And so it would always be that week between Christmas and New Year's before he would go home after his birthday on the 2nd of January. It would always be like marathoning as many games as we could that's when we would just like play through the entire halo campaign or pull an all-nighter like literally stay up all night just to see if we could playing dark alliance it was, <laughs> it was so much fun and those are the those are those like simpler times where you're just like yeah let's be disgusting and just eat pizza and <laughs> i mean we literally did this this weekend just played for nine hours of destiny just straight and ate pizza and it was great but um yeah it always i remember i remember opening up the n64 opening the present of the N64 when that came out. And I think we got it in 1998 or whatever, 97 maybe. And that was a really, really great one too. God. Yeah. Christmas is great. Go buy your kids games. 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 That's it. Christmas is special. Video games are special. And you, the listener are special and we love you so much. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. If that's happened already, if it's at when is, Hey Siri, when is Hanukkah? <laughs> Day before Christmas this year, I think. December 22nd. I was wrong. So, happy second day of Hanukkah today, everybody. Because we are progressive. Auto insurance. We're flow from progressive. There's a price scanner tool. That's it, everybody. We love you. Happy holidays. (laughs)